Old Snailock here again with another episode of Old Snailock's Workshop. Today we're going to talk about how to set the teeth on a saw blade. A specific kind of saw blade. A one man or a two man saw blade. This is one of the parts that I like least about doing uh, sharpening on a one man crosscut saw. I've filed the teeth, and I've gone through, and I uh, need to check the set and make sure that the teeth are bent in the right direction. That means I'm handling a saw with sharp teeth. Quite often, I don't need to do much after this, but there's always a few touch-up things. These teeth are needle sharp. I've cut my fingers, I've scratched my stomach, I've cut my leg. This is not something you want to be frivolous about, but you can't put anything over the top of the teeth. Uh, I would think, well, I'll put a piece of wooden guard over the top of it, a little masking tape, anything to cover up those needle sharp points, but the needle sharp points are what you're going to be working with on the setting part. So just be really careful. I typically work with the saw without a handle, that way I can slide it back and forth in my fixture. Uh, that means that it's easy to let go of. If it falls, let it go. You're not going to catch it. You're not going to do anything good to it. it. May ding up a few teeth, might even break a tooth off. But if you grab a hold of one of those edges and try and stop that saw from going down, you're going to cut yourself bad. So, be real cautious from this point on. Today we're going to talk about setting the teeth on a one-man crosscut saw. There's several ways of doing it. One is a rather primitive way. You're going to use an anvil. Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Today we're going to talk about setting the teeth on a one-man crosscut saw. There's a couple of methods. One's a more primitive way where you use an anvil and a hammer to bend the teeth. Pretty simple, but it involves a bit more skill than the other methods. The one that I prefer is to use a uh, setting pliers. Once you understand how they work and the function of what they do, it makes it a lot simpler and it's very, very consistent. It doesn't rely on how well you use a hammer. It doesn't dent or bend the teeth if you do a miss strike good piece of equipment to have around. This little device is called a spider. It was invented a long time ago. I've had this one for about 20 years. I'm sure it was invented way before then. The idea behind a spider is it's a kind of a teeter-totter. These two legs act as the pivot. This leg being shorter, when I hold this down and then push on this side, this side moves up and down. The longer length means that this is higher off the surface than this leg. So you can actually have two different settings with the same little tool. It's very robust, it's easily set. Once you set it, you're probably never going to do anything with it other than just use it the rest of your life. The way it works you set it on the side of the blade, you put the blade on a flat surface, set it on the side of the blade, slide the leg up onto the tooth, this one's set to the short leg so it's about ten thousandths. This tooth is bent up that tooth is bent down. Same thing down the length of the blade.
after you've gone along and checked one side of the blade, you flip the blade over, and you do the same on the other side. Same device can be used on a two man crosscut as it just like it is on a one man crosscut. This device is a Morals saw set and it's specifically designed to use on one and two man crosscut saws. You may be more familiar with the Stanley 42X. Uh, this one is used for crosscut and rip saws in the standard pattern. This one is made by Dunlop. And personally, I like it better than the Stanley. Uh, don't really know why, other than this one gives me blisters and the Dunlop doesn't. Uh, the idea is basically the same on all of them. The tooth goes into the notch then when you squeeze the plier handle the ram comes out and bends over the tip of the tooth. So on a tooth that's tipped that way I'm going to set it over the top of the tooth making sure that this face this face is flush against this little pad here and there's a little gap for it to set up against I want to have the tooth centered in the gap. I don't want to have the anvil hit the tooth on either side. Then I just squeeze the pliers. The ram comes out, pushes the tooth against the anvil, and sets the tooth. It only bends the tip of the tooth. This can be moved up or down. This makes it bend just the very tip of the tooth. This makes it bend further down. I prefer the further down. Now, other people may have different opinions on that, and I respect their right to have that, but this seems to work for me, so that's what I do. And you just go along the saw, and on every tooth, you do the same thing. Now, you can go along the tooth and do this, but myself, I don't like being around those sharp teeth with my belly. Uh, I've had a few accidents. So I will take the saw out of the, get, the jig here and turn it around and do the opposite side. You can go along the, the saw pretty quickly. I had it mentioned that this is a pretty big saw to sharpen, but there's so few teeth because they're so far apart, it actually goes a lot quicker than sharpening a smaller saw with more teeth. Plus these big teeth, they let you get right in there and see what you're doing. Lots of room. Now that I flip the saw around, I just go along and do the other side.
This is one method of setting a saw. It works okay. It's not my favorite. But for purposes of demonstration, we'll use it on this one. This method is portable and it doesn't require a lot of tools, but it's going to take some pretty good fiddling to get it where you want it. And it keeps making me handle those sharp teeth. There we have it. Now we'll work our way down the saw. These really aren't ideal conditions for testing a one-man crosscut saw. They're really designed for being used outside where you have more swinging room. See it's how it's less than 20 degrees outside and it's blowing like the dickens. I'm going to wimp out and stay in the, in the basement workshop. That's a three inch thick by about five and a half inch wide piece of dried out mulberry. Mulberry's hard to rock. Doesn't cut very easy at all. And if it was green wood it would slice a lot easier. You can tell that because I'm not getting noodles. I'm getting a few noodle-like chips. Because it's dried wood, it's sawdust. So it doesn't cut and slice as well as it should. 
but that's pretty good. Thanks for stopping by Old Sneelock's workshop again. Hope you enjoyed the video on how to sharpen a one-man crosscut saw. If you did, please click the like button. You can also subscribe to Old Sneelock's workshop and get a chance to see all the videos as they're made. We're also on Facebook. You can look in the description and there's a link to my Facebook page. That gives you a few background shots and some day-to-day -day happenings that don't get into the videos. Thanks for watching.